There is a fountain, a stream of hope, a source of mercy, and a river of love. There's no place that it won't flow. Not a mountain or a valley. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to River Heights Vineyard. My name is Rena. I'm one of the worship leaders here, and I'm glad to see you here this morning. Thank you for, thank you for being here um, as part of our church family. And welcome to those of you who are joining us online, live, or later. Welcome. You are a part of our family, and we love you too. We're going to start with a time of worship together. So why don't you stand and join me as you are able. God, we welcome you here this morning and we bring ourselves to you. Come and meet us. Amen. Find me there. Spirit, you find me there. 
the kingdom comes. Que venga tu reino, venga tu reino. This is how the kingdom comes. Que venga tu reino, venga tu reino. This is how the kingdom comes. Que venga tu the opportunity every Sunday to have communion together as a church family just as we've been singing about this morning. Uh, there's a little bit of a change here in the room this, this morning. The elements uh, are up here on the tables on the front and uh, those elements signify Jesus' sacrifice for you and for me on the cross. It is the cups so when you, when you get it it's still going to be the film and the wafer and then the second film and then the juice and I'd like to just uh, lead us in a prayer before we invite you up to take those elements. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And it's all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And we welcome you to uh, come up and take these. Uh, you can come get the elements anytime in this next song. sing about what Jesus has done for us. I am yours because you came for me. Stayed until the work was done. You defeated sin on Calvary. Breaking death's grip over me. And I am yours, I am yours, I am yours, I am yours, I will never cease, and I will never cease to praise the one who gave his life away. All that I am is yours. Jesus, you have rescued me. My song will forever be. All that I am is yours. Welcome me to stand as you're able. I am yours because you came for me. Stayed until the work was done. In your blood you wrote my destiny. Now I will rest in this one thing. I am yours.
cease to praise one who gave his life away. to praise the one who gave his life away all that i am is yours lord jesus you have rescued me my song will forever be all that i am is yours oh and i will never cease to praise the one who gave his life away all that I am is yours. Jesus, you have rescued me. My song will forever be. All that I am is yours. yours, God. Thank you, God, for your presence here this morning, the way that you're with us, the way that you're meeting us, the way that you love us. Thank you for what you've done. wonderful to worship together this morning. You can have a seat, and it's time for announcements. Hey, friends. It's so wonderful to worship together. It is. Uh, I'm Justin. I'm one of the pastors here. I'm really glad to see you. If you're new with us, we're especially glad that you're here. Jeff, who's going to be giving the message, will uh, be out in the lobby at the end of the service. There's a welcome center out there, and he has a welcome box for you that he would love to give you. And, um, you know, grab him, say hello, and he'll get you hooked up with that. Hope you have a great time with us uh, in the Lord's presence this morning. Um, we have a church purpose here together at River Heights Vineyard. It is to help a growing number of people love God, love people, and change the world. And one of the ways that we continue our worship and support our church purpose is through financial giving. And so just want you to know how that can happen if, if you're going to do that. Uh, you can electronically give through push pay, and there's info up there on the screen about that. And you can also give cash and checks uh, uh, in the uh, connection card boxes. Uh, and those are on both, of the, uh, both sides of the door on the way out today. And um, I just maybe like to just pray just quickly about, about, uh, about you know, giving. Just bless you as you give, God. Um, you know, God, whether we're giving electronically and my money is going somewhere so magically um, or whether somebody's writing a check, uh, God, thank you that you give us good things and that you invite us uh, into generosity. And so, God, I ask that our giving would, uh, would result in more and more people knowing your love. Amen? All right. All right, can you take out your connection card that is in your program? 
Um, it is something that we ask everybody who comes on a Sunday morning to do every week. Uh, if you're at home, there is going to be a link there, and you can click on that and do the connection card that way. Um, the uh, connection card uh, also on the uh, on the back of it and on the front side, you can just put. If you're a regular attender here, you can just put your name, and we'll know who you are. If you're new, give us as much information as you're as you're willing to give. And then on the back side, there's a place for prayer requests, and our staff prays through these prayer requests every single week. We love praying for you and with you for the things that you want to see God doing in your life. So if you would honor us, just put a prayer request on there, and we would be happy to be praying for you this week. Also, there's a place for God's stories. You know, um, there are these moments sometimes when we realize, oh, God has been active and present to me, whether it's in awesome stuff or in the midst of the challenge. If you have a God story, it could be something big, something real small, you could write that in that God stories section, and we'd love to, to, uh, to see that, okay? Uh, again, thank you for doing those, putting in the connection card boxes on the way out of the room. Uh, got a number of great announcements here coming up. We've got a men's retreat coming up very soon. It's June 11th through 13th. The theme this year is restoration. We're going to focus on allowing the Holy Spirit to renew our thoughts and our attitudes. And I love the men's retreat. It's one of the best things that happens every year. There's like a wide variety of ways that you can connect with good things at the men's retreat. It's good to get away. It's good to get a chance to, you know, maybe catch up with people or make some new friendships, get a chance to talk to some people that you wouldn't have had a chance to get to know otherwise. And we also get to be in the Lord's presence. We get to worship together. There'll be opportunities for prayer and all that great stuff. So all the way from just hanging out and having a good time um, to having a good time in the Lord's presence. Uh, it's going to be an awesome thing. So there's still time to sign up for that. You could sign up for, for that today. It's the last day. You can register at the Welcome Center out there. Um, you can also register online at riverheightsvineyard.org. So if you're at home, uh, that's your cue. You could go to riverheightsvineyard.org and you could register for the men's retreat. We'd love to have you there with us. Vineyard Kids Twins Game Fundraiser is coming up as well. Um, that is June 24th at 7 p.m., and the Twins are playing Cleveland. Uh, these fundraisers allow us to raise money for our Vineyard Kids. It's the primary way that we raise money for the Vineyard uh, Kids ministry here. And the cool thing is, is you buy a $20 ticket, and $7 of every single one of those tickets goes to Vineyard Kids directly. And I love it. It's awesome. It's a great time. I love going to the game and seeing all our people there, and we're doing good work. We're blessing the ministry of, of this church. We're actually blessing our youngest people in our church body as we're going and having a good time. So today is the last day to order tickets for that. So that's why we're making sure we're announcing that today. You can sign up also at the Welcome Center or online for that as well at riverheightsvineyard.org. Okay? Twins game. It's going to be awesome. Sign up for that. Support Vineyard Kids. We've also got the Middle School Holy Spirit Day Away coming up. The, uh, the RHV Youth Group has been exploring the big questions of faith with Youth Alpha, which is awesome. And so the cool thing about this is it's going to be on Friday. It is June 18th. It's 10 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. So it's like a whole day. And this is good for us, you know, for parents, and we don't know that that's coming up. It's good to know this is coming up. The Middle School Holy Spirit Day Away is coming up. But the other thing is... If you have a middle schooler and they haven't connected in yet with the youth ministry here, this would be a great opportunity to have them have, you know, an extended period of time uh, getting to know some people and having a great day. So um, it's dual purpose. So just be aware that that's coming up. Um, and they're going to be uh, focusing on the Holy Spirit um, in our lives. There's a flyer in your bulletin that has more information and ways to register. Okay? And the last one I have. Summer life groups are kicking off June 20th. Life groups are the best way here at RHV to get to know each other, to make friends, to connect with God and community. Do it for the long haul together. And the summer semester of life groups kicks off, and you can see what those groups are uh, that are being offered in the catalog in your program. You can also register on your connection card, and um, I think it'll be a real blessing to your life and your summer. Uh, so that's, I think, all I have. Why don't you take a moment, say something nice to somebody around you. You could, we haven't done this in a while, right? This is the greeting part. Does anybody remember how to greet anybody? Okay. <laughs> and Jeff is going to be up to preach in just a second.
And if you're at home, if you're at home, greet people in your living room, in your basement, wherever you're at. Greet them at home too. That's fantastic. Good morning, everybody. It is good to see everybody here this morning. Yay. It's hot. Hi, Brad. Oh, yeah. Uh, you at home, if you're at home, come to the screen real quick. TVs, monitors, all that. Ready? Here we go. Elbow bumps. There we go. Got it. I love it. Now that we got kids ministry open, some of the kids come in and run up to me and do that as I greet at the front door. It's so great. Ah, it is good to see everybody here. My name is Jeff. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. And uh, we are in, we're getting towards the end of a series that we've been in since February called Creators Not Consumers, how God is using us uh, to create for his kingdom and, and do different things for his kingdom. And within that series, we have some mini series. So today is the last uh, day of our mini series of community creators, um, how we create community. Uh, and we've talked about this over the past few weeks. We've talked about love, forgiveness, uh, using, utilizing our spiritual gifts. Last week was justice, and today, hospitality. So, when you hear the word hospitality, what do you think of? I'm going to give you a second, give you a minute, 10 seconds, to think about that. What do you think of when you hear the word hospitality? Do you think of food? <laughs> yeah, Lisa. Do you, do you think of chatting, talking with people, hanging out with people, entertaining? Do you think of coffee? Do you think of work? or cleaning, or invitation? Do you feel good about it? Do you get excited, or do you get completely frazzled and stressed to the point of anxiety? Either way, we're going to talk about that today. Let me pray for us as we get into this. Holy Spirit, would you come today? Meet us right where we're at. And Lord, open our hearts, open our eyes and our ears to what you have for us. Thank you for loving us right where we are. Help us to understand this a little bit better in Jesus' name. Amen. So what is hospitality? Dictionary.com says the friendly and generous reception and entertainment of guests, visitors, or strangers. The hospitality in Greek it's philo xenos. The word philo or phila means love. Hence, Philadelphia is like the city of brotherly love, right? So xenos means stranger. So philo xenos is a lover of strangers. Uh-oh. Might have to do some work here. I don't know. Hospitality in the biblical sense, is not just having people over all the time. It goes deeper than that. It's a whole different level of entertaining guests. We're going to watch a video clip. If you've ever seen The Hobbit, anybody know The Hobbit? Seen it? Okay, good. Love that. It's a great series, trilogy, whatever. Uh, this is The Unexpected Journey, so it's the first one. And uh, Bilbo Baggins is a hobbit, so he's short with giant feet, all right? giant hairy feet, but he is at home and he's ready, just sat down to eat some food, eat his dinner, okay? The doorbell rings, and it's not a doorbell like we know, it's like actually a chime type thing. And so he gets up, dwarves come into his house. He has no idea who they are, why they're there, or what is happening. So we are going to pick up where that leads up. Lean. <laughs> Excuse me, that's my chicken. Um, if you don't pass my wine, excuse me. Cool as fuck, He's got an injury. I mean, the axe in his head. Dead? No, only between his ears. His legs work fine. Oh, I'm some of that. Put those back. Put that back. Put that back. Not the jam. Excuse me. Excuse me. A tad excessive, isn't it? You got a cheese knife? Cheese knife? He eats it by the block. Uh, no, no, that, that's Grandpa Mumble's chair. No, uh, so is that. Take it back, please. Take it back. He's an empty, not for sitting on. 
Not a coaster. And put oh, that map oh, down. Oh, Excuse me, Mr. Gandalf. Yes? May I tempt you with a cup of chamomile? Oh, no, thank you, Roy. Mm. A little red wine mm. for me, I think. Pili, Pili. Oin, Loin. Wallen, Wallen. Get for the bomber. Dory, Nori. Not my prize, Minister. Nori! Thank you. Play on. I am a good carry Yes, you're quite right, Biffa. You appear to be one dwarf short. He is late, is all. He traveled north to a meeting of our kin. He will come. Mr. Gandalf, mm. a little glass of red wine is requested. Oh. It's uh, got a fruity bouquet. Oh. Cheers. Bomber, cut! Here you go. Excuse me, that is a doily, not a dishcloth. But it's full of holes. It's supposed to look like that. It's crochet. Oh, what a wonderful game it is, too. If you've got the balls for it. <laughs> Bothering to masticate these balls! My dear Bilbo. What on earth is the matter? What's the matter? I'm surrounded by dwarves. What are they doing here? Oh, they're quite a merry gathering. Got to get used to them. I don't want to get used to them. The state of my kitchen. There's mud trotting in the carpet. They, 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 they pillaged the pantry. I'm not even going to tell you what they've done in the bathroom. They've all but destroyed the plumbing. I don't understand what they're doing in my house. Excuse me. I'm sorry to interrupt. But what should I do with my plate? Here you are. Oh, hospitality can be kind of messy, to say the least, right? But hospitality in general can be messy. Um, but there is a difference between entertaining guests and showing hospitality. Entertaining might say, I want to impress you with my home, my clever decorating, and my cooking. Hospitality seeks to minister and said, this is my home. It's a gift to me to give to those that are in need or to help others that need help. Hospitality aims to serve. Entertaining might put things before people. As soon as I get my house finished, as soon as I get decorated, as soon as my house cleaning is done, then I'll start inviting people over. Hospitality puts people first. No furniture? Psh, we'll eat on the floor. No decorating? We're friends. Come on over. Oh, man, just get over here. But come home with us. Entertaining might subtly say, this home is mine, an expression of my personality. Look, please, and admire. Hospitality says, what's mine is yours. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't be clean. It's okay to have a clean house. It's okay to have decorations. It's okay for all of that. I'm not saying you shouldn't. But it's a heart issue is what we're talking about. Hospitality versus entertaining. What is it behind those things that drives that within us? In our home, in our home, we have some clutter. We have some things about, you know, we have teenagers, five teenagers at home. It's all good. But once you've been to our house, we tell you where the food is, the drinks are, the bathrooms, the things that are important. Once you know that, you're family and you just have at it. You don't have to ask questions. You just go. That's the way it is at our home. What do you do when somebody drops by unexpectedly? Do you open the curtain and look and say, oh, no. They're here. And then you throw everything in the closet and clean up as fast as you can. You leave them out there. And then when you answer the door, you, hi. Is that what you do? 
Or do you just open the door and welcome them in and give them a road map through all the Legos and the clothes and the dishes to the living room? What do you do? Showing biblical hospitality to others doesn't come from a table, a fancy table that says, look at me, look what I have. It comes from a loving heart that says, what I have is yours. Now, hospitality in the early church uh, became a basis for evangelism. One of the primary reasons that the gospel was spread throughout Rome as fast as it was is because Christians practice a different kind of hospitality. Romans typically uh, practice hospitality for the important people. If you could give something to me, if I can gain something from you, you can come to my house and eat. A lot of political gain here, a lot of climbing up the hierarchy to get higher in, in society. But Christians became noted for extending hospitality to everybody, to the least of these. And this was significant part of how they developed the reputation of love. The early church loved people outside the church as if they belonged. And we'll call them outsiders just for, just for today. But their motivation was and is the same for us today. Our motivation for extending hospitality to the stranger is our experience of receiving hospitality from God. Because if you think about it, we were estranged from God. We were all estranged from God. We were far away. We were distant because of our sinful desires, our sinful nature, our unclean selves. But God, in his great love for us, offered us hospitality while we were still sinners. He invited us into his home, and there was a cost. Jesus died. His son had to die and rise again so that we would have a seat at God's table again. Ephesians 2, uh, 12 through 13 says, In those days you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the covenant promises God had made them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. <laughs> I love this. But now you have, been un uni or you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. Hospitality is at its core. It's at the core of the believer's experience. And we see God's heart of hospitality. It's throughout the Bible. Genesis 18 is a great example. The Lord uh, appeared to Ab again to Abraham near the oak grove belonging to Mamre. One day, Abraham was sitting at the entrance to his tent during the hottest part of the day. Imagine that yesterday. Sitting at a tent, the hottest part of the day. Whoa. He looked up and noticed three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran to meet them and welcomed them, bowing low to the ground. My Lord, he said, if it pleases you, stop here for a while. Rest in the shade of this tree while water is brought to wash your feet. And since you've honored your servant with this visit, let me prepare some food to, you, or some food to refresh you before you continue on your journey. All right, they said, do as you have said. So Abraham ran back to the tent and said to Sarah, hurry, get three large measures of your best flour, knead it into dough, and bake some bread. Then Abraham ran, ran out to the herd, chose a tender calf, and gave it to a servant who quickly prepared it. When the food was ready, Abraham took some yogurt and milk and roasted meat and served it to the men. As they ate, Abraham waited on them in the shade of the trees. Abraham went through a lot of work. For some people he didn't even know. How about Zacchaeus, the tax collector? Zacchaeus was a short guy and heard about Jesus, wanted to know more about Jesus, and knew Jesus was coming into town. Streets were lining with people. He couldn't see. It's like the little kid behind everybody trying to jump up and, where's he at? Where's he at? So he climbs a tree. And he says this in the Bible. He climbs a fig tree. Right? A sycamore fig tree climbs up to the top of the tree where you can see Jesus. And then we pick up the story in Luke chapter 19, verse 5. It says, When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor. 
And, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, Lord, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save those who are lost. We could go on and on. Acts, in Acts chapter 16, you have the jailer and Lydia. Luke chapter 5, you have Levi who invited Jesus, the disciples, sinners, tax collectors, all to his home at the same time for a gathering. There's so many, it's, there's just, the list goes on about hospitality and the changing of hearts uh, for those who have experienced Jesus. I have, uh, or about, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, uh, I had a friend who lives in Fairbo, or lived in Fairbo, uh, he and his wife and his family, and they had bought a house in Rosemount, and uh, they had sold their house. Everything happened so fast, they had nowhere to live. So we were talking about this, and I said, well, well you can stay with us. And they said, no, you don't understand. It's going to be a couple months. I go, yeah, and? So they did. Husband and wife. Four kids, under 10, and two cats. I am not a cat person. I can handle kids. Cats? Anyway. But here's the thing. I don't say that because, oh, look at me. I, ha I house people. It was such a blessing for me to be a blessing to people that needed help. That's what it meant to me. And that's what it did for me, and that's what it can do for us if we have that heart of hospitality. What could hospitality look like today? Well, hospitality is often the first time that people experience, that people that are not a part of the church yet, they, it's their first experience with the church. It's hospitality. We want them to feel like they belong. That's why we call this our home. This is our family. Because that's what we really are. We're like family. It's like last week was the first time we got to stand up and hug and talk and shake hands. We could have done that all day long. But it's, it's just we're family. We do that. But that just means that hospitality needs to adapt to the experience of the people that aren't a part of the church yet. Take, for instance, let's just say like my wife, Chris, and I, if we invite a family over and one of the family members is a vegetarian, but we serve steak to everybody. Well, that's rude, right? We aren't listening. We aren't paying attention. We aren't, we aren't adapting to the situation. We aren't being accommodating. But I have to tell you this, accommodation is different than assimilation. Because assimilation, in assimilation, the burden is on the outsider. The burden is on them to change if we're going to share culture. So if you're a vegetarian and you come to my house, I expect you to eat steak. That's what that's saying. But in accommodation, the burden is for me to change. If I know that you have that, I need to serve what you need to be served with so you feel welcomed in my home and cared for. And we in the church, we need to do that. Because somehow, when we deal with people from the outside of the church, um, we often have the attitude that they should be grateful for whatever we offer, and they should change. However, I will say this. If hospitality is treating strangers as part of the community, if that's what hospitality really is, then we owe them the same obligations we, own our, we owe our friends, right? It's so easy to think about hospitality in, in, in terms of food and what we have for dinner, but it's a lot more difficult to think about what it means to accommodate for a stranger, accommodate for people on the outside. And many of us here inside the church, many of us, uh, we have things just the way we like them now, right? We, we, we selected a congregation that sings the songs that we sing, meets at the time that works for us, has sermons on things that we think are important. But if we're going to welcome outsiders, if we're going to welcome those people, then we bear an obligation to listen to them, to hear what they want. And, and, not, and not like us to change. And, but here's the thing is, we need to maybe change our music, change our services, change our sermons so that they reflect the taste of the people that we want to welcome. Hospitality will cost us. But I will say this. I want to make this very clear that the message of the gospel 
never changes. That is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It never changes. But how we deliver that message will change all the time. It's kind of like, so Brad, when you came in today, you saw a nice dressed gentleman with, you know, dress casual. Well, he's sitting right there. But dress casual, you know, blue shirt, tucked in, pants, whatever, what you wear to work. And then you have me, the guy who just came off the beach and we're going to dinner later, right? But see, that's who we are. We accommodate because we want people to feel welcome. In the vineyard, that's, that's, it's come as you are. That is the vineyard way. Come as you are. If you're wearing your PJs, please at least wear some clothes, but wear your PJs. I don't care. You're hearing the gospel message. That's what matters. That's what matters. So the key, there are a couple keys to hospitality that we need to understand. Key number one, hospitality welcomes those who are different from us. Earlier, I talked about the early church. But what about us? What about now? What about here? The old, there's an old saying that says, practice makes perfect. Well, we need to continue practicing welcoming our differences here at River Heights. That's what I love about River Heights. They're so diverse. And I'm talking diverse not just ethnically, but Everything is diverse about who we are. We bring everybody and we want everybody to be a part. Galatians 6, 8 says this. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get, rid of, let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. You know, the most welcoming place should not be the bar down the street where everybody knows your name. It should be the church. It really should be. We, we care for people. We care for them. We want them to feel cared for and loved and needed and wanted. And a stranger is not someone just like you that you haven't met yet. A stranger is somebody that has different, that, that could be radically different than we are. Especially, at, well, one is ethnicity. I love Acts 1.8 to describe this. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And you're like, how does that, what does that have to do with? Everything. Because what that's talking about, it's talking about ethnic diversity. Samaritans, Gentiles, Jews, all will be a part of the church. People that all hated each other will be a part of the church. So if we're going to learn, if we're going to learn and <laughs> learn how to do this, we need to develop our philozenos, our love of strangers, because we're going to need it. Another difference is economical. Loving strangers, even if they have less than we do, have more than we do, it doesn't matter. James uh, warns about favoritism in this area of hospitality. James says in, in chapter 2, if you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, ah, you can stand over there or sit on the floor, well, doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? Huh. Another difference is theological. They may view things about God differently than you do. Or even political. They view social issues differently than you do. The list, the list of differences goes on and on. Nevertheless, we have to be willing to open up and welcome those who are different than we are. Those that are welcome, different than you. That's why here at River Heights, we have a common purpose of helping people love God, love people to change the world. Not only does hospitality welcome those who are different, but the second key is, to hospi is that hospitality takes commitment. It takes commitment to love people. It takes commitment to love strangers. That means through thick and thin, good and bad, highs and lows. Philippians 2 says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. 
Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright stars in a world full of crooked and perverse people. It takes commitment, a commitment to be a part of God's community. It takes commitment to love those around you. So what specific steps maybe that you need to take today or maybe this week? What ministries can you partner with to use the gifts that you've been given for serving? Who needs your love today, this week? Who can you invite into your home, regardless of how messy it is, to share a meal with, to talk with, because they need your fellowship? I'd like to invite the worship team back up today, or back up now. And as they come up, I uh, just want to give us some tips for the week. Earlier, I talked about a couple of, of stories of hospitality, but the story, I'm going to have you read Genesis 18, 1 through 8, Luke 19, 1 through 9, Acts 16, Luke chapter 5, some stories that you probably aren't familiar with. Maybe you are, but a few that you're not. Read through those and see what that hospitality looks like. I would encourage you to pray. Pray for uh, God to show you at least two people, maybe even a family uh, that, that you can show hospitality to and what that looks like for you and your family. And then do or practice, I would say, or, and then the last one is practice. And there's a couple things, a few things to practice here. Number one is engage with people. Engage face-to-face -face connection, not text, not Snapchat or Instagram, Instapot, whatever. It's... <laughs> Face-to-face -face connection, asking questions, open-ended questions. I ask questions to my kids all the time. The answers I get, no, yeah. So be open-ended. What did you do last week? Another one is practice hospitality here. Practice it here. Join the hospitality team. Yeah, we served coffee today. Yeah. So we have coffee. We have the coffee team, greeting, ushering, handing out bulletins. So many different things to do in regards to hospitality. Practice that and get on a schedule for us. That'd be, that'd be fantastic to greet people. Uh, invite people to share a meal with you is the last one. If, if it's one person or 10, whatever, invite yourself to their house, however you want to do that. Wait, is that hospitable? I don't think so. Maybe. Anyway. It's causing them to be hospitable right away, isn't it? Yeah, just show up. No, but invite people to share a meal with you. There are so many huge things in, in, in the Bible that are done around meals. The Last Supper, big one. So many. If you could, if you could stand, stand with me right now. We're gonna, the worship team's gonna play. They're gonna sing another song. But I wanna, I wanna invite you, we're gonna, we're gonna do something we haven't done in over a year. We're gonna, have it, we're gonna have prayer ministry up front, in person, not over a screen. It's gonna be up front, laying out of hands. But I, I, would, I would invite you, uh, I, you know, if you're, if you're on the prayer team, uh, if you're part of the prayer team, if you could come up, that'd be fantastic. You know, this is another part of hospitality. This is how they show hospitality is to pray for us, to pray for you as we, as we need prayer. Um, so I would say this. If you're, if you're struggling maybe with, with hospitality all in general, come on down. Like, if you're stressed because of this, come on down. But if you're, you know, here's the thing about stress. It causes anxiety and maybe even depression. If you struggle with those things, come down and receive prayer today. It doesn't have to always be about hospitality or whatever we're preaching about that day. If you need prayer for something, come down. We want to pray for you. I would encourage you to do that. We're here to serve you today. So as, they, as the worship team plays, I would encourage you, as the Holy Spirit urges, if you feel that urging, that's the Holy Spirit telling you to come down and receive prayer. Let me pray for us, and then Justin and the team will take over. So Holy Spirit, we do invite you to come. 
We just say thank you for who you are. Thank you for hospitality. Lord, thank you that it's part of who you are. And Lord, we want to do what you're doing. And Lord, you are greeting people. You are, you are, you are with people all the time, sharing life with them. And so Lord, help us to do that. Help us to do it better. Help us to do it, to even begin to do it, Lord. Give us the courage to do that and the strength to do that. Lord, help us to just share life with other people. Now, Lord, just urge people to come down, receive prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah. Just as Jeff said, uh, anything that you'd need prayer for, you can come forward and get prayer for that. And let's worship the Lord together. God, we give you our attention.
your love is reaching out I'm running to your arms I'm running to your arms I'm coming home I'm coming a blessing for us that gives us a chance to just you know, make sure we're receiving whatever Jesus has for us. This is from Ephesians 3. It's uh, verse 17, the first part of it. It says, may Christ live in you as you open the door and invite him in. Okay. We've been talking about hospitality, about being people who will, you know, invite invite others into our lives with the love of Jesus. I just want to make sure we're making a space for each of us to say, Jesus, I want to invite you in today. I want to invite you into my life today. So um, if you'd like to just put your hands out in front of you and uh, just expect to experience uh, the presence of the Lord upon you. Yeah, bless you, friends, to receive from Jesus. Jesus, we thank you. We invite you in again today, Jesus. Thank you that, you know, as you accept us and you welcome us, it's your desire to actually come and live and breathe inside of us, that you send your Holy Spirit. We say yes to you, Holy Spirit, Spirit of Christ. We say yes. We invite you in, into our very selves today. Make your home in us again today, God. God, I ask that out of this place we'd be able to welcome other people. Out of your heart, out of your love. Thank you, God, for your heart for us. Well, yeah, let it be expressed among us and through us. Yeah, bless you, friends. We're going to continue to worship together. You're welcome to stay. Uh, the uh, prayer team's still up here, and they'd be happy to pray for you. 
And if you have to head out, just want to say, so good to be together. So good to worship together. Look forward to seeing you next week as well. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Sing that again. I'm coming. Jesus, beautiful Jesus, beautiful Jesus.